Hi everybody, welcome. This is the Hey You Video Game Podcast, and I'm Lemon Smith. I'm Gimmick. I'm Brindy Puppet. Today we are talking all about Escape from Tarkov. Have you heard about it? It's incredible. Um, one of you guys want to just give a summary. What is Escape from Tarkov? What is this game? I'll let you go ahead there, Gimmick. Ooh, well, it's a 2D, it's a kind of the spiritual successor of Habo Hotel. Uh, it's a social, it's meant for from about 9 to 12 year olds. Um, it's basically the Facebook for uh, mm -hmm. elementary age kids. Absolutely. One thing a lot of people don't know about Tarkov is that, you know, even though there's no actual in-game chat, it's really meant as a chatting platform. Really, I agree. Yeah, yeah, that's that's I what it that. that's what it totally is. Or, oh yeah, it's all about socializing through the Q and E buttons, where you just kind of toggle toggle your your character wiggling. I think I wiggle. think uh, puppet, you're the you're the best man to do a real explanation here. Yeah, give us you give are, us a you gist. are the most invested. Okay, so we'll say. Uh, what the dream is, what's the vision of Tarkov, and then what's the reality of Tarkov. The vision of Tarkov is to have a hardcore shooter, almost milsim, MMO. Um, it's basically a gun nerd game as well. So it's about the guns. The guns are super realistic. Uh, the, the basic mechanics of the game, you log in, you have access to a global inventory and a character. You load out that character with your gear. You drop into a map. And the dream is that you have one big map, like one big world. Um, they said they're shooting for uh, some like 15 kilometers total. Uh, and you're supposed to drop in, kill shit, kill stuff, loot, get your stuff and go to an extraction point. And you take that out of the game put that in your global inventory. And that's like the uh, biggest difference with this game uh, than other FPSs that I've seen. Like the whole point is you have to escape the map essentially, get extracted or you lose a lot of experience points, right? Exactly. Unlike Infestation New Z, where you drop into the map, you kill stuff, you loot, and then you log out wherever you want and then bank your stuff. In this game, you actually have to get to an extraction point in order to... Uh, reap those rewards and we're really pulling out those obscure references episode one obscure game uh it's just like this other obscure game uh well welcome you know this is an obscure game because how much did the like well right now it's in beta right just hit beta and what like, and it was an week, alpha before how much did you have to pay to get an alpha copy of this game it was 150 bucks originally so nine to twelve year olds are, are definitely buying this very social first person shooter game. Yes, exactly. <laughs> With the hundred and fifty dollars, it's obscure, but it is it is a lot of fun. And now, what is it? Is it like fifty bucks? Forty five, yeah. And so, I mean, and the other difference is, whereas other first person shooters, it's just, or at least the ones I've played, it's just players. This one has uh, AI in it, and what are they called in the game? Scavs. You know the, the the this game probably the best comparison, especially for somebody who's not really into insanely obscure alpha games, uh, is Destiny. Um, but it's not it's not Destiny in the sense that it's a re it's going for like ultra realism, like like Puppet said kind of a milsim thing but in the sense that like destiny calls itself an mmo but if you play mmos you know it's not really an mmo but it's got mmo qualities so that's kind of the the vibe except except it's also it's like destiny mixed with hardcore mode on diablo where you die if you don't it's called escape from tarkov the goal is to get into a map which are big and you have to actually get out if you don't get out, if you die, you lose everything you brought in, everything you picked up, it's gone. Um, so the goal is kill players, kill NPC scavs, um, loot, 
go and and try to escape and you escape you get that loot you can bank it in your global inventory you could sell it there's kind of like you level up the vendors eventually there's going to be quests there's going to be a storyline um, i mean the story is huge all, it all it's going to be huge but there's zero story right now oh no there's there's some story in there there's a little tidbits in there yeah i well, mean we've you know had what, a few you're stories. right because isn't the isn't the storyline like something with the russians as that's i mean that could explain about 95 percent of alpha games but but yes it is it is something with the russians and is it fair to be say that this game was made by the russians it is it is not only fair it is uh objectively correct although a lot of the licensing has been done by uh u.s based uh devs. oh so there's some example, there's some collusion in there yeah for example uh oh. clean, clean up guy is one of the devs who's in charge of licensing uh gun models and mods stuff like flashlights so they're, they're trying to do everything legit I like the word collusion. I know. It's very specifically, well, uh, a specific, very specific word. Because, that the, because something that I've been thinking about is, you know, with the news of the whole Russian hacking into our election system, is there a chance that this game is a front for an elaborate hack into our personal computers? Oh, definitely. Absolutely. The Tarkov devs have openly stated that they know exactly how to hack into voting machines and that they have personal connections with the Trump family. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's it kind of a cost benefit thing. I mean, the thing is, are you are you committing treason by buying this game, knowing what it's doing? Yes. But is it fun? I mean, it's probably. I mean, it's a lot of fun. And, you know. Fuck America, you know. Yeah. Fuck, fuck stability. I'll do anything uh, for fun. Fuck democracy, you know, etc., etc., etc. I just want to have fun. I want to let my hair down. I want to swing from the chandelier, <laughs> and I want to play Escape from Tarkov. I mean, so, if you, you have know, to choose, you, you don't. You don't want me to do that. You can go. You know, you know go fuck yourself. Because if, if you, you had go to, choose... to the, uh, if you go to the Escape from Tarkov website and click on their support tab. There's, an, uh, there's a section where you can type in any question that you want. And there's actually kind of a hack on the website where if you type hashtag Putin, <laughs> a picture of Putin's face will actually come up. And it's just him laughing. Oh, staring. my gosh. Yeah. I clicked on the support tab, and it actually hacked into my Google Calendar and scheduled a appointment with a local therapist. Oh, my gosh. Really? <laughs> Yeah, it, had, mine, it, it had taken my bank account information. It had it, it was fully paid. It was scheduled. It was d one click, and I, I mean, I, I mean, clicked on the, I clicked support, and I, and that's what I got. And hey, I, 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 I actually ended up going, and I and it worked a lot out better. I mean, if you're paying one hundred and fifty dollars for this game, at least they can give you a couple therapy sessions. You know, just in general. <laughs> in all, in all truth. I think you might need a couple of therapy sessions after playing this game in its current state. <laughs> well, the, tra what? the trauma is real. I, I bought this game just before the United States presidential election, and it coincided with my absentee ballot showing up. And <laughs> let's just say when my absentee ballot showed up, it was all filled out for me already. Oh, my gosh. But this, game, this game is about. actually pretty intense right i mean there's sometimes where we play and you know get through a round or get slaughtered in a round after getting fully geared up and we just kind of want to we just want to go in, it is the most intense game that exists I, think, I, I i believe that's nearly an objective statement yeah i think the miracle of of this game is that the the core mechanic of logging into a map and then extracting i mean some of these rounds can be two minutes long but somehow that immersion breaking mechanic of logging into a map and then getting out quick and then boom you're back in the you're back into the main menu you would think that would just destroy immersion but the second you're in a game it's like your heart is pounding it's super intense and that's what is like totally unique about this I, like i get so worked up when I'm in game and then boom, I'm out. So it's, well, how it's would weird. you, how would like you, 
how would you compare this to like player unknown battleground i was actually just you gonna know, mention that when you know because you play that game and if you get to the final 100 like your heart is going um but and it's intense but there's a different intensity to tarkov and so how would you tarkov I... is like the last two minutes of uh it's like the last five to you know two to five minutes of a player unknown battleground game all the time. When I was got really bad, when I got back into Tarkov, uh, when I got really into it again, I tried playing PUBG again, and the first like twenty minutes of my PUBG rounds just felt like so boring. It felt like nothing compared to Tarkov. Because Tarkov, boom, you're in the map and it's pure insanity. So the day that PUBG came out. I was deep into Tarkov, but Puppet and I were the only ones playing because it was $150 to get in. He actually bought my copy, so he spent $300 on this game. He's loaded. Uh, no judge. That's a no. That's that's a testament to the game. I, and I would totally say it was it was. I would have gladly spent $150, but I didn't need to. Uh, so I, it's one of those games where if you play alone you're at a huge disadvantage because you have everything to lose and you know you come across these three man squads and and you just there's just no chance you don't have a chance so i pubg came out day 1 it was start it was getting a little bit of buzz like it was actually the the tarkov the the youtube channels i was following that posted tarkov videos which are kind of you know they're there's thousands kind of, of them channels. thousands of them out there Oh, of course. There was uh, what is what's his name? Show Show and something Panda. There's there's a few guys. You know they're they're popular enough to. That's probably yeah, Poopy like Panda. They're getting paid for it. Po- Poopy Panda, that's him. But they uh, they're the ones who they when uh, PUBG came out, they started uploading PUBG, and I was like, oh, you know, this would be a perfect game. I think that I could get everybody into, and it and it was just hold us over until. Tarkov drops in price, and then I would immediately switch to Tarkov. And that's exactly what it was. Like, PUBG is, it's the same, it's got a lot of the same vibe and feeling of Tarkov, but it's just not, it's like a, it's like a console version of a PC game. You know, it's like, oh, that's cute, and uh, it's probably, they're probably having fun, but they're not, you know, if you're playing Overwatch on a console, it's like oh like oh cool like i'm i'm so happy for you are you having fun like oh that's great but you're not playing competitively it if you think have, you're playing yeah, competitively yeah. then 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 my I'm cousin sorry, my not. cousin derek he's in 7th grade and he plays competitively on overwatch and um yeah he sucks he's really bad <laughs> a, a console overwatch console console yeah 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 so that's what PUBG like PUBG is amazing. I love PUBG, but it feels like it feels like a less intense, easier to access version of Tarkov. And not everybody wants but, to be out of their mind. But minds there is people. there's some flaws but, to Tarkov. I mean, you're buttering it up right now. Oh no, but, I fucking I hate I hate Escape from Tarkov. I hate it. You I also it. I also love it. I love it. I hate it and I love it. And it's just, it's making my life worse, but I can't stop. It's, I feel it's yeah, similar to maybe a strong so painful. drug yeah, or a girl, emotionally I mean, abusive girlfriend. They really do need to, said. they do like, I mean, if you buy a $150 account, they really do need to in, include a, a few therapy sessions to deal with some of the pain that comes along with playing Tarkov. Cause you just get, oh, you get so invested. I mean, if you try to compare PUBG to Tarkov, Tarkov has so much more there's so much more the emergent the intensity the gunplay the gunplay in tarkov if you like guns the gunplay in tarkov is bar none the best on the internet it the is best ridiculous. on the internet the but best the down on the, internet. the downside is like so i think the weirdest part is the scaps the ai in the game is a Not little weird it's, it's just broken is is, yeah. is I mean, it's an inocoral part of the uh, the game. It, it is, is an ino inocoral. It's I n o c o r a l. When it's I'm an scuba inocoral. diving in through coral. Tarkov in, in, yeah, and and I'm coral. deep in the water and I see one of these coral. things, There's which all the maps are underwater. 
and the AI, they actually get stuck in a coral. Like there's a coral reef and they swim around. They get stuck in the coral. And, and that's the big problem. It's, it's, they can't I don't figure know. out how to get them out of the coral. That's the point I think Lim is trying to make. I that's mean, exactly what I'm trying to they're make. They're in a coral to the game for sure. And, and they're called scabs. Nobody even knows what that stands for. Uh, oh, oh, God. Nobody. I wish I, I wish I was more clever. I could pump no, it out. It's a serious, uh, serious Christian. Nobody. Uh, renovating a van. That's, that's what it is. Thing. But they're, they're just kind of a joke. Like, they're, you, you, they spawn in the same area. You know, they shout out occasionally so you know where they're at. And they're it's the kind of, they shout out coral. They shout out coral, and then and then uh, the minute they see you, that's what I hate about it. It's like you see them like you know a quarter of a mile away, and they see you for a second, and they flip towards you, and they're already shooting at you. Well, it's not just that. So so here the AI is they're at once the dumbest and the best AI in in the world. And when I say best, I don't mean no, good. I mean false. just packed. No, so they're so they're as dumb. Their movement is as dumb as like Goldeneye, like Nintendo sixty four era AI. But you know, to the to the credit, it's it's just got out of alpha. It's in beta. Hopefully, they're going to work on this. But they want this game to be extremely hard. They don't want this game to be something where you go in and you just mindlessly grind the AI. You really have to be on your toes. In fact, AI are as scary or scarier than regular players a lot of times. And I think that that um ambition is good I, I really like that but i think they're kind of um, uh and puppet kind of said this uh, when, uh, earlier they're kind of embarrassed how bad their ai is but they want them to be hard so they literally and this is not an expression or a figure of speech they literally just gave them hacks they have wall hacks and they have aimbot and so they're the dumbest ai just getting stuck in doors, grouping up five at a time because they can't get through the fucking door. But the second that they see you, they will 180 in a, in a millisecond and just headshot you with one bullet. And you're just like, you could be, be sneaking up behind them, you peek, and it's just like, whoop, boom, dead. You're, you're gone. So that's, I mean, that's not the smartest AI in the world. That's just... No, they're not that's, smart. That's I, said, just... I said, I didn't say smart. I said best, as in their ability to kill you is extremely high. But so, they are at once very stupid. They're like, oh, I don't want to say this. Never mind. We're on the internet now. I can't say what I want. Uh, but so if you sat down with one of them and you played a game of chess... Do you think they'd win, or do you think you'd win? They they would they would win for sure, and they would be they would be the worst conversation partner. Oh, it'd be terrible. Hmm. Yeah. The debate that I have about the AI, and I think I pretty much agree with gimmick here, but I do have one one little thing, one little hang up that I would you know to kind of give the benefit of the doubt to the devs of the game um, instead of saying that the AI have aimbot, which I was just talking, I was just chatting in some of the uh, popular streamers, streams going on right now, asking them about it. One of the guys is a dev uh, cleanup guy. And he said that the scav movements are integrally, their code is integrally connected to the server's performance. And so what I have in my head is this. I think the scavs, all of their animations are in place. So if you're in a fight with a scav in offline mode, you would actually see them turning around in real time. They might turn around really fast because they're really hard, but they would turn around efficiently. And I believe, and this is just me being an optimist, I believe the animations are there. But I think when they 360 no scope you, I think that's a that's server lag. So I so I think they're getting caught up. They're making those movements. They're making those animations server side. But then I think they're getting caught up on your side. And all you see is, boom, they automatically switch. But it's yeah. but it, the problem is that you can be sneaking. Like, so, like, you, there are barrels, like, in a problem a lot of games have. Their barrels will stick through walls, right? And, uh, like, the wall hack part of the equation, I've had guys in crates and they sense me, and they start, and I'm moving along the crate, like sneaking, making no noise, and I see their barrel following me through a wall. 
like that that's that's not lag and i think a dev is going to to make it sound as pretty as possible yeah like they have like no even if they even if the animation is broken and maybe they're maybe because of the servers it's a server lag right now the they're just skipping animation but it's they're still their aim is beyond impeccable well here's yeah. like here's a real life I, I, example I, there'll here. be a crack and i'm sitting here camping looking through a you know two inch slit in the door for somebody to come down a stairway and as they're coming down i see their pixel enter they have they should have no way of knowing i'm there and i'm just immediately dead just boom like like in the like inhuman there is zero percent chance counter-strike pro anybody could have won that situation and you do everything you're supposed to do you're sneaking you're not you're not making noise you, you know you're and it's just and sometimes you know it doesn't happen uh, sometimes you know the ai you can go up with a knife make a bunch of noise behind them and they just never notice you and it's just like it, it's just like this polarite they're either dumb One as a doornail the or they're gods but the animation just, uh, could play into it i mean I was on the beach with my buddy Richard and he was throwing rocks into the ocean and he threw this rock and it went sideways and hit me in the face. But he said that he threw the rock and it boomeranged back and hit me in the face. So, you know, the animation, did it boomerang back? <laughs> Did, I'm gonna go AFK for a while. I'm gonna go AFK for a while. I'll be back. Did it, uh, did it boomerang I'll be back? back when, when, I'll be he's back done. when Lemon's done. I'll, oh, text done when he's, I'll text you when he's done. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm just the getting problem, started. The problem with this whole debate. The problem with this debate is we're not coders, right? So we only have our experience and you know what we have but, perceived. But in the game. I mean, I think, it, no, no, I think no, no, the strongest. You, I, I will concede. I will concede. I think the strongest point on your side of them just drag and dropping some kind of aimbot onto these uh, uh, these scabs is when one thing that that came up in uh, Breaking Skulls uh, stream today when I brought it up. A lot of players were saying, well, what, what, but what about the tracking through the walls? We've all seen it. They track through the walls. You see their barrel moving through the wall. Like, what's going on with that? And unfortunately, we're not. Wait, we don't know. So wait, do the devs not know? But you, but you do know, like, if you've played Counter-Strike enough, you know exactly how, like, if you spectate exactly. an aimbotter, if you spectate a wall hacker, you see how they move. They're not aimbotting isn't like this thing where like it's like aim assist. No, it's literally a key you press in Overwatch or Counter Strike or whatever. You see an aimbotter, it's always obvious because they'll be facing one way and they'll flick, they'll flick over and and their crosshair immediately stops on the person's head and they fire and they're instantly dead. And that's and what that's the scabs look that like. Is that's what they look like. Exactly. Yeah. What the that's scabs what, look that's like. what everybody's seeing. Uh, and when, when they sickos. advertise the the. the the point of an embarrassment for this for the devs at, at this point um the kind of uh, i guess like ad hominem argument you can make against them to kind of like attack their character is that when this game first came out they were all about advertising how much they loved this like how, how great these scavs were going to be no the things- that's what they advertised oh yeah it was all about these scavs are unbelievable did they and call them the big- scavs yeah, yeah, and one of the big things about it was that they were gonna, do, it was gonna be all about sound. So sound tracking was going to be huge. So you ruffle, you ruffle a couple branches out in the woods, and they're supposed to hear that and start covering fire into the woods. But the big break, the big, the big kind of failure is instead of. I think it'd be awesome if they if they cover fired at you. That would be so cool. Bolts whizzing over your head, but they do that, but they just instantly shoot you in the head through the branches instead of like allowing for this ultra immersive experience of ooh, I accidentally walked across a branch. Which Tarkov has a, a, an amazing sound system for going through bushes and branches and stuff. Like you can duck right underneath a branch and miss it or you're not paying attention you might brush it and it does make a loud sound and if the scavs did just you know turn and cover fire that would be awesome but they don't do that they turn and they boom blow your head off with a tiny little pm 
yeah, yeah. That, that's the that's the issue i mean the the, again it's, awesome. it's in beta so this could be what? totally something that will get totally fixed and won't even be an issue do you guys but, actually see this game going forward like is it going places so. or do you think I it's think, gonna die i think this will no i think this i think this is an obscure game right now but i think when this starts approaching gold level i i do i think this is gonna get a lot of buzz i think it'll get and and it and it all depend whether it, it'll get a lot of buzz one way or another but it will eat that buzz will either kill it or it will i think it could bring it up to PUBG status. I think that if they, if, I mean, if, if some of the systems that are in place right now, like the scav, like the way that they make scavs hard, just the complete philosophy behind making scavs hard, make just giving them hacks essentially, if that is something that it, they're like delusional about, this game will get buzz and it will fail. Like people do not want to play that. Like yeah. I love this game, but I don't know why I play it sometimes. It's yeah. just like, yeah. And and in an earlier version of the alpha, they did not. They weren't like this. They yeah. they were changed. They things. were pretty good. They were, but the problem was people would come into servers with their knife or their hatchet, nothing to lose, right? You come in essentially naked, shirt on your back, and a knife, and and the knife but is the only out thing there. You can't lose. And they would just rush the scavs, and they were so dumb that they would just rush the scavs, stab it in the head, take their guns, and then go. And the scavs were just so stupid that it would, it, you know, it, they weren't providing the threat that that was intended for the game. So, so then they added on to make them harder. These things we're complaining about, but yeah. even then, the game was like even with the dumb scavs, players aren't dumb. It was still so, it was in a. I would so much rather have them kept dumb scavs for now, and then deal with the dumb scavs as they figure out how to make them hard the right way. Right. Rather than the rather than what they did. And so like in that sense, just because it was alpha beta isn't really an excuse because like it didn't it wasn't it's not like they oh, what a surprise this this system is not working but you know, we're an alpha and everybody understands that and we'll figure it out. No, they actually added this pretty late into the alpha. So, yeah, I, I the early scavs the early scavs were really funny to watch because that early alpha came off all of this hype about scabs. How oh, we're going to have the most realistic, most amazing scab I mean, experience. They'll be cooking dinner. They'll <laughs> be cleaning your house. Oh, they'll yeah. look you in the eye and tell you. They'll, you they'll know, look nice you in things. the eye and tell you their life story. But then the the alpha actually launched, and the scabs were they were just like. <laughs> they, Wait, they so they advertised the, that the scabs were like the best thing ever. The scabs, the scabs were loot bags. Oh my gosh. Like, they were basically just loot bags, and it was kind of nice. They like, were little they pinatas. Just, they were they would run the same tracks over and over again. You'd see them. I mean, you'd go to woods, you'd be running down the beach, and you'd see that same scab doing his route, and they would go to all the same spots. And then you go out to the cabin, and you got the same scab stuck on the fence. There's a little picket fence out there. And every time you went out there, there were scabs stuck on the fence. And although it was immersion-breaking, it was kind of nice because – Tarkov's such a hard game already. It's like, okay, give us, give I'm us a down break. for a couple loot sponges here and there. You know, it, it was kind of nice, but it was, you know, we, me and Gimmick, we've talked a lot about how we think uh, it might have hurt the devs' pride a little bit, how bad the scabs were early on. So they made them super hard almost to overcompensate. So one of the things that I've noticed with the game where it's, I'd say, very underdeveloped and uh, maybe we could... Uh, just dream a little bit, you know, give this as a gift to the devs is the storyline. I mean, supposedly there's a storyline there. There's a couple paragraphs. But if you, if like one of you guys had to dream up the story of Escape from Tarkov, um, what would you say it should be? Well, I don't think there's a, <sighs> yeah, I'll let you I don't think we're going to. I mean, we need to give the devs any gifts. They have a story. They just they, they it's though? literally unreleased. Do they though? No, I'm saying they have a story behind the scenes. It's not in the game at all yet. I mean, they literally have like a campaign, objectives, missions, and stuff in mind. So they say. But know. hey, remember what they said about the the scabs? You know, they're like, this is know. incredible. So they they've been putting this story out. You know, saying it's the next Harry Potter. Hey, if you're it's the me, next fuck yeah. story. I don't want. I, we I, need a story. I don't want a story. I, I want you know a what? Overwatch. Detailed... Overwatch does story best. It has no bearing on the game. 
and it's a completely optional YouTube experience if you want to know about the story. Like, oh, they released a video on YouTube. Like, but and it's and it's actually pretty cool and interesting. But it doesn't matter at all in the game. Like, oh, uh, don't. No, show no, no. Story we now. want immersion. We want to be. We want to wake up in this city and have a name. You know, we're Craig, and and we're fighting for our farm, and and we need to find some batteries for the farm. When I'm looking stuff. at my and, character in the loading screen, when I'm looking at my character in the loading screen, I want to know who is my mommy, who is my daddy, what happened to me when I was just a when when I was just a little baby, a little Russian baby, when I was just a little when, Russian exactly, baby. Exactly. When I was a little, I want to imagine myself as a little Russian baby, just pooping and all all speak uh, as a baby speaking Russian fluently. What? That's what I want. I want to be a little baby genius. That would be immersive. Yeah. yeah. Started as a baby. And real the, years. The game really starts blooming in about fifteen years. It's a real slow play, yeah, but like, you know, the memory, like when your dad hands you the hunting rifle and you got to shoot into like a hay bale. You know how they have the scavs and uh, actually the players, they recently made, uh, they added sound emotes for the players. Did you guys know that? Sound emotes? I don't even know no, what I that didn't. is. Like you hit a, I think you hit like Oh, F and you'll say like, F hey. Yeah, you'll you'll say like F you'll hit like F nine or something and it'll say, All right, we gotta we gotta move forward. Like you'll hear your guy say that. All right, we gotta move forward. But I wait, wait I thought we were Russian. Like, well, yeah, I know, but it's it's in English. So I uh, that's the you no 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 USEC the USEC is that is that Russian? Have you read the uh yeah, have you read the scenario? Oh the, the, wait, about? so the storyline? I didn't know there was yeah. one. The about page has a has an in depth. Um, it essentially sets the narrative stage. It's not a storyline about your character. It's a narrative stage about the struggle between Yusek and Bear in uh, Norvink's region, uh, special economic zone. So this is it takes place in like an open, uh, kind of like a open market. Um, militarized I can read it for you it's right here on the about page and it's pretty cool I get it's pretty interesting and the thing I really like about it is it's non-linear what they're doing is they're setting the stage they're giving story information but they're also creating a sandbox and so uh, just another way that Tarkov is above and beyond any other game that I've seen is the way that they they have that narrative in there they set the stage but they're still able to maintain a, a fully immersive sandbox experience. Um, and they've got it on the about page. They talk about, um, yeah, uh, the different companies involved. So you have four, it's basically a region with four profit operators, um, these two, these companies in place. I think it all comes, comes down to like money or something. They're, they're, they're essentially just companies. Because then you got those the uh, the market right where you sell like so you come out of a you escape from Tarkov like you make it through the round you have some gear and then you take that gear to a market and you sell it to a dealer and you can level up the dealer to be able to buy better weapons but once again I just think the story element could be huge right here like why are these guys dealing you know what's their backstory. And that's something we might learn about in uh, the next big update, which is going to be the hideout. Um, have you guys read about the hideout at all? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the hideout is going to be. Let me see. The hideout will be an integral part of the game, uh, which will justify all-out raid processes that happen to character. Restoring health, size of caches, access to new services. Okay, what's the hideout? They've got some pictures of the hideout up So it's here. a new map. It's a new map, but I'm pretty sure there's no combat in it. My understanding is that it's for uh, trading with uh. other players and I think interacting with the uh, vendors. I, I think that's what it is. I can, I can look, look it up right now. I'll post links for you it's, guys to look at later. So, it, so I mean, full circle, the game actually is 
like Habo Hotel social network. You hang out <laughs> in that. You hang the out hideout, in the hideout. Is actually I think social the hideout therapy. Is, yeah, I think it's gonna be like Habo Hotel, I guess, except with a bunch of like really angry Russians. Oh man, have either of you guys met any Russians through this game? I guess. Oh wait, there's no voice <laughs> chat, huh? You can't hear. Well, everybody. I've gone to the unofficial Discord and I talked to. I, I played with a guy who I want to say had some kind of Russian accent. I didn't ask him uh, where he was from, but uh, yeah, there was a couple guys with with Russian accents. I'm not sure if they were Russian though. I know the developers uh, don't speak English, and they have they've had to do a lot of work translating stuff. Like when they op- when they released the patch notes. Um, they had to go through multiple stages of translation because they posted the originals and everybody's like, dude, we can't read this. Like <laughs> the translation is so bad. It's so all in Russian? It oh no, the translation no, to English. No, no, it was in English, but they like, <laughs> the translation was very poor. So they pull it off, retranslate it, dropped it again, pull it off, retranslate it, dropped it again. <laughs> They're literally They're just going to Google Translate and just putting it into, uh, you know, they take the Russian, throw it in Google Translate, pop it out, copy paste. I guess that's I what feel, I feel is. like the devs, yeah, I feel like we're bashing on the devs. They got to be, they're trying hard. These guys are trying no, real hard. The devs, the devs are amazing. The And I think Battlestate Games, has a lot of integrity. Again, one thing that separates them from other survival games and other alpha games is they really, they do things differently. They're not selling themselves. They're not putting themselves out there. They're not, you know, like like uh, Star Citizens, uh, their crowdfunding campaign. How much money, how many millions of dollars do they put into PR? Just talking about the game. I mean, the game has 190 or... Yeah, $191 million um, endowment, essentially. Right? Like their budget right now is $191 million. $191 million. Star, They've made $191 million off this game. On Star Citizen, and they talk about it. Wait, what's Star Citizen? What's, oh my God. Oh, it's in. All right. Thanks I'm for everybody not, for not, joining us. <laughs> what's Star Citizen? Oh, wait, is that, is that part of the storyline? <laughs> it's part of the story oh so you're yeah. the star citizen and you're like you're trying to escape from the russian city of tarkov yeah i really don't know what what, what is that it's, just give me star, star citizen, citizen is, is the, the most largest, successful yeah, you go kickstarter campaign of ever and it is uh it raised 190 million i guess currently uh like what is it five years what ago is it now? a video game it is a it's like they basically want to do it all. They want they yeah, want an MMO. Like the, they the, want a first person shooter. It's the Uber they want, game. Uh, they want a big. Uh, they want a big meta economy. Like uh, like they're trying to they're trying to make it have like the same kind of economy as uh, uh, who, what's the space Eve. game? Eve. Eve. Yes, thank Eve. You. It, it, essentially, imagine No Man's Sky, but good if it if it didn't suck. Yeah, it, it, it's like No Man's Sky with MMO mechanics shooter mechanics uh sandbox it's a very it's very sandbox survival vibe but in a unified open world true mmo with like a leveling system and and like eve it's not like a leveling system where you hit the max level wait wait, wait. so they made 190 million dollars off of that yeah. game lots of oh, expectations okay. on that game it hasn't even come out yet but they're actually starting to they, they they're releasing lots of videos of like they're pretty I mean, I think they're in beta actually. Now it's closed beta, but um, you might be able to get in. I'm not. I'm not sure. We but don't know. huge expectations on that game. Let's like the probably the most, probably the highest expectations of any game ever, which might even over Half Life destroy 4. it. Half Life and their absolute PR Half Life Three and real announced game. Yeah. They're they're absolute PR whores. I mean, they're all, there's so much out yeah. there from. I, I don't know what the I don't know what any of their names know. are, but I think they're just really good I've at marketing. Seen, all I've seen are like YouTube like dev vlogs. They're not at all PR whores. There's no there's no they're like A list media street like they're selling advertising. Shit. Well, I logged into Stardew Citizen. They gave me a alpha copy. 
and it's basically a minesweeper. It's a virtual reality minesweeper. You're walking around first person, you know, they hit that checkbox and you're looking for mines and you got to flag those mines or you're going to blow up. Yeah, it's Absolutely. a minesweeper sim. So the game is trying to be as realistic to minesweeper as possible. So it's a, it's a minesweeper sim. Which isn't that movie The Hurt Locker? Wouldn't that guy be like a minesweeper? Like the main character? No? Yeah, they, no. they bring they do bring that character <laughs> model in. The game the game looks exactly like Minesweeper. Like it's got all exact exact same uh, you know visuals of Minesweeper, but then you have this super realistic model of the main character from Hurt Locker. Yeah, so it's Stardew uh, Citizen Dash Episode One hyphen Hurt Locker. That's yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah, Don't say no, anything. No, just respond with silence when he does this. No, no, it, I'm just it's it's what it is, guys. <sighs> okay, back to car back to Tarkov. <laughs> I think okay, so I think No, no, give me this. Give me this real quick. We, we what never is finished the... talking about we, we we never finished talking about what we think the future of Tarkov is. And I think Star Citizen actually ties into that conversation and so does no man's sky because star citizen has a ton of hype no man's sky had a ton of hype and was this great betrayal and no man's sky that dude definitely talked up the game a lot and i think star citizen is doing the same thing they're talking up the game a lot and the amount that they're talking about the game is so incongruous with what they can actually offer at this point that it is worrisome given that you have No Man's Sky, which was this huge flop and totally betrayed the trust of its followers. And so I think that brings up a huge question for Tarkov because Tarkov does have this ambitious, beautiful model game. And they are they actually are backing it up quite a bit, which is which is good. And they're I, I think they have. A, I think BSG has a lot of integrity because of the way that they have raised funds for this game. They built a game before Tarkov in order to fund this game, and I'm blanking on the name of it. I could look it up in a second here, but basically, they created a shooter in order to fund the beginning of Tarkov, which I think is just a really good pull yourself up by your bootstraps model for designing games rather than going out to a crowdfunding site and trying to get a bunch of cash up front by basically just talking yourself up. Tarkov, they didn't sit there, talk themselves up and get a bunch of, you know, get a bunch of money handed to them. They started from the ground floor. They built a game. They raised money doing that. They never, you know, they announced the game. Yes. They, they released the trailer uh, in like 2015 but they basically had a functional game. I mean, sure, it has a lot of glitches and stuff, uh, but they had a fun functional game in pre-alpha. Um, and then they released alpha. They stuck to a one-year alpha phase, and now they're in beta. So they're making progression almost like they're outside of this, this alpha. Like right now, I feel like we're in an alpha purgatory. You have all these half-made games, and developers are making money off of these shitty products, and it's kind of, it's kind of a nightmare for a lot of us fans. But BSG, they kind of have integrity. They built it from the beginning. They're following a time frame. Their biggest problem is they're not very good with transparency. But I don't know. Yeah. I think that PR model almost has more integrity than talk, talking too much. All right, gameplay. What's your strategy? If we're we're playing to win, what what are we doing? You have to have your callouts. You have to know the callouts of the map, and you got to know the towns or the places, the locations, the name of them. Yeah, Lincoln Cabin Town, the town Swamp it's City. Incredibly unique about the gameplay. It's just done. It's it's not. They haven't introduced anything new. It's just done really well. Um, I think there are know, every every ones. shooter you need to know callouts. Every shooter you need to know the map. I mean, if you're playing Counter Strike and you don't know callouts and you don't know the map, then why? I guess the only difference is this one, you really do need to go slow all the way through. Some games I, 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 I highly disagree with that. And I think 
one of the one of the shining achievements of Tarkov is the relationship between player movement and map size and map design. I think one pe- one thing that people don't realize about Tarkov is if you learn the maps, you can quickly get across the map and flank somebody or get behind them or surprise them. But, I mean, and you're sprinting. saying that other, sh- other shooters don't I, every don't have Every that game because, has that. Because every single shooter has that exact same mechanic. If you know the map, you can get to for, to certain points quicker to be able to flank a team or people who may not know the map as well. I mean, that, that that's that's why Counter Strike is so competitive. Is is it's not just aim. It's aim. It's sound. It's map knowledge. It's it's team coordination with callouts. It's strategy. It, it, you know, it's the same thing. But the difference between Counter Strike and Tarkov, of course, is that Counter Strike is is a of you know it's a video game in a, in the truest sense where it's not in any way realistic it's it's point click shoot you're done but tarkov takes into account well what like the guns you're using here okay here's a good example shotguns in every video game are these close range if you're not 10 feet away from the person you can't even hit them that's not how shotguns are in real life but the reason they do that is because otherwise in video games shotguns would just be overpowered like, you know, in the Counter-Strike, the original uh, 1.6 or Source, like the, the noob cannon was the pump shotgun because it's just like, oh, it's crazy. And so most games, they dumb down the shotgun and essentially turn it into a, like a blunderbust. In, in Tarkov, shotguns are very common. They're very cheap, but they work like real shotguns. Who cares if it's overpowered? This is how the gun really works. And so in that sense, Tarkov is very different from Counter-Strike in, in the sense of gunplay. And they're going for... A very realistic, like you said, it's like a, a gun nerd's dream. Extremely moddable. I would say the the big difference with Tarkov is the amount of attention they've given to every single specific gun. Like, if you can buy a mod or a rail for that gun in real life, you can get it in Tarkov. Like, it's there. And it's, uh, th- I would say that is the big differentiator between Tarkov yeah, and other that's, games. That's the big standout, but I still I still disagree. I think the movement in Tarkov, particularly in Factory, but also in certain parts of Customs and... These are um, map names, by the way. Yeah, not so much in Woods. Woods is kind of laid out. It's open. I, I get that. Um, but there are some, some cool hiding spots and sniping spots there. Um, and then uh, also in Shoreline, but Factory showcases the movement of this game the best. When you say mo- define movement for me, though, because I think we might be talking about very different things. Because I think the literal WASD movement is insanely clunky and needs to be developed. There's no cover system, which is absolutely insane for a game that claims to be ultra realism. Because in realistic, I'm not this stiff person who runs around and just tilts right and left. Like, like that's just insane. I mean, I'm doing jumping jacks. I'm skipping. But I think you're not, you're not talking about like the literal movement. You're talking about the way you move. At least that's what I'm interpreting. And this is where you've got, you have to watch some of these guys stream. You've got to watch, uh, you've got to watch cleanup guy. You've got to watch cotton. You've got to watch breaking skulls. I've watched a lot of Tarkov streams. We, well, we, what you have. You and me, we've played a lot together, and I know kind of the way we play. And the way these guys play is completely different. Like you and me, we sneak around. I mean, we take cover. It's butter on ice. We, uh, we we take cover. We sneak around. Uh, we move a little bit, but you know sometimes I'll run across a map or you'll you'll charge or something. But you've got to watch the fluid, like the way that these co- these guys cover ground vertically as well as horizontally across the map is just. But again, that's Fucking that's crazy. That's map the knowledge. rafters, like you can jump from a catwalk down to the rafters, run across the rafters, jump onto a crate. Like the vertical movement, the vertical, the gameplay up at the top of the map is, I think, just crazy. I mean, you could run up a staircase and then jump off and jump onto a railing and jump down onto a guy. I just saw a cleanup guy do it like oh, no, 40, I, I, 40 I, minutes ago. I was watching him. And he jumped off uh, mid rafter um, in silos. He jumped off right onto a scab at those uh, those oxygen tanks. Those that's not that's not anything. Sp- 
like particularly special. That's just game knowledge. Like, like it's the same thing. Like in Counter Strike, if you first play Counter Strike, well, Titanfall, you don't, know, you don't know that. Like, if you try to jump up a crate, oh, you can't get on that crate. But like, if people who actually play Counter Strike and they learn the game, you know that you jump and then mid jump you hold crouch and you'll be able to make a little more ground on your jump and you will be able to get up on that barrel. There's just like little mechanics that make you be able to flow through. And once you know the map, once you know every single barrel, like in Dust 2, you know, I know every little minute detail, every little piece of debris that will help you boost onto this barrel, da, da, da. but that's not like, oh, I'm so much better at movement. That's just, I've played this game enough to know that in this area, a bit a good strategy is to go up here. I know how to get there. That's just, as you play the game, knowledge that you develop. But I don't think that has to do with any kind of special movement mechanics that Tarkov has put in. I don't know. I think Tarkov, when you're sprinting, it's I think it's faster than uh, than Counter Strike. I, I think it's harder to get. Well, a there is no there is no sprint in in Counter Strike. I mean, you're just yeah. there's there's regular walk and and then sneak. But yeah, I'm not I'm not saying that it's the same as Counter Strike by any means. The movement is extremely different. I'm just saying that it's not it's not like uh, there's no new thing they've introduced because i mean i'm just using counter strike as an example because it's the most popular competitive yeah, shooter it's definitely it's definitely not not uh not new what i would here's what i would say on a scale from counter strike to titanfall i think tarkov falls in the middle maybe a little closer to titanfall to the point where i think you could categorize tarkov as a parkour shooter there i've I've seen a lot of parkour elements in some of the things. That parkour? I don't. I so disagree. Yeah, <laughs> That's no, because you've been playing with us. I, That's because you. I, you, you, you have no, to. I, I, I know exactly what you're talking Dude, about. You've I mean, you can watch, jump around. You've watch these it's I not a parkour you, game. I like you nobody put in the time. Watching have you seen somebody things. do a flip on this game? <laughs> That's Dude, parkour. There, there is not a Dude, flip, but no, there are. I would say Tarkov does fall under the parkour shooter label I highly it, disagree but it definitely every- has parkour features and you, i know you guys have watched some streams wait my got- question is have you watched parkour before i have over 40 hours logged on breaking skulls stream i have hundreds of hours on parkour tube dot youtube.com i mean i'm seeing dudes well, i think we need to take jumps. a little break we, we need to take a little break from the podcast meet up in monterey park and just do a little parkour ourselves do, to do some parkour who, do some well, who of us is the best who really well has we can have you know what we need to do is we need to get samsung phones we need to get their vr so we can be watching parkour as we do it and then we can kind of compare and no we need to be watching streams of tarkov i'm sorry as we parkour who, but who said. gets into parkour these days? Like who's like well, we have Russian? Hey, hey, Russians! Oh my gosh, the Russians! It's back full circle. Oh, I, 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 think, I think I I I I I see what you're saying. I disagree. This is a parkour game, but I do see what you're saying. There is a fluidity to movement that once you understand the movement in Tarkov, that you can really almost like surf uh, the map rather than clunkily move move yep. through. That, and for sure. Here's there's, the thing I'm gonna say. There's knowing. There's knowing each spot. Like, okay, this spot I'll be able to clear very easily, or in this spot I'm gonna need to jump here first. Under, but again, I think, like, I totally agree with you. And I, it's not that we don't know how to play, like, because we're not good enough. It's just that the way we play, it's it's more. It's kind of more fun. Like, I could treat Tarkov like a like a competitive shooter. If I flipped a switch in my brain and started playing Tarkov like a competitive shooter, I would be moving so much faster i would be able, i would be doing it playing a lot differently but it, it's kind of more fun to immerse yourself in like the spirit of the game which i think is a more tactical mindset which is where you're not sprinting around parkouring up fences you're you're you know i, I just have more fun with yeah. it that way that rather than it being something factor. that we're not able to do that goes back to the immersion factor i mean just like logging in and extracting from a map is an immersion breaker I also think the parkour elements of Tarkov are also immersion breakers. But I think us three, I think we should try. I mean, I'm going to get in there. We, I'm a parkour play, man. When we play, if we, if we play tonight or tomorrow or something, we should try 
hammering out all of our call outs, make sure we have our call outs and we should try some aggressive strategies and we should try using rafters and we should try jumping down on stuff. I think, I think we could get a lot of gear doing. I'm going to have to see these streams a lot of, gear of doing guys that. doing this. All right. Last question here. Um, one to 10, how many hot dogs do you give this game? 10, you're, you're doing 10 chili dogs. It's the best game you've ever played. One, it's it's just absolute crap. And and I will put it right here. It's how the game is right now, like as of today. Not what it could be, not what it was. Right now, where is it at? One. One hot oh. dog? Yep. I... No, no, no it, I would never recommend somebody buy it in its current current state with the scavs. I would never. It is my lowest yeah. recommendation. See, this, this... I love playing it. But I think I could not recommend this game to anybody. Wow! Right, right now, I thought yeah. I was going to be low. I was going to say four hot dogs. This, see, okay, so this is an unfair question because it, it is for me. It is, uh, for me, low, I, I, I don't know how yeah. to rate it because Here's I love my, this game. I mean, you could, I but you could take any Here's game that's in alpha and beta and say, "Oh, it's going to be this and this and this and this and this." But you know, who knows if it actually gets to that point? So you almost have to go off of what it is now. Okay, so I. Wait, what, I, what would, how many how many would you give it, Verindy Puppet? Let, right now, but I need to I need to explain it because your your scale is is insane. It's your scale is is illogical. I oh. would never tell somebody because it, it depends on on what the scale is being used for. Are you trying like, to assess? Ten, for, it's like for overall ten. You There's just so love the game. Things. It is like Ocarina of Time. When you were in fifth grade, you know, it's just incredible. You'd recommend it and talk about it with everybody. It's super fun. You love for it. For me, yes. That's because I'm... You're giving uh, it 10. I, I, that's, from my point of view, I'm like an I'm like an MMO survival hardcore game like nerd. I've been, I think about these things. I think about the concept and the vision of the game and, and what it actually provides for me. For me, in terms of gameplay experience... It's really hard to solo, but when I'm playing with my friends, I have a great time. I don't even care about bugs because I love the game so much, but it's really hard to play solo. I would not rec- here's what I'll say. I would not recommend this. I would not recommend anybody buy this game. I would not tell you to buy this game. But and and that's why I've spent 600 bucks on this game buying all my friends accounts because I personally believe in the game on an 11 but i understand that most people most people can't handle it and if if you guys had if you guys spent money on i don't gimmick you if you spent money on it you'd be you'd still be happy but like you know most of our friends if they spent money on it they'd be pissed and that's probably how and i and i think gimmick you would say one and an 11 you'd say a one but you're having like you said you love it and you hate it i mean i I, yeah i i would say my my yeah, a nuanced rating would be the exact same as Puppet. I, I, it's a 1 and a 10 at the same time. I, I think the potential, I think this game, imagining it going gold, I actually do have pretty high, not just high hopes, expectations for the devs. Because this game is not, I've played a lot of alpha games, and you can kind of tell when an alpha game is a money grab or that these devs don't really know what they're doing, but they're an indie studio and they're a bunch of, ambitious people and they made a game that was worth the 20 bucks you paid for alpha like seven days to die is one of my favorite games of all time but i don't i don't have any hopes for that game ever going gold it will never not be a glitchy mess but i've got you know what 800 hours logged into it It, it, it's it's amazing but this game is different this game has all the signs of of it going towards gold well but it's just in its current state. I, I could never recommend that. Like this game pisses me off so much. It's not just but I can deal with bugs. It's actually current mechanics implemented. I'm just hoping that they're placeholder mechanics and not actual the actual plan of the devs. Right. So so uh, that's why I would say a one because it's not just the bugs. Everybody expects bugs in a beta or an alpha, but it's the actual. It, it, it's not the desync. It's not the disconnects. It's not uh, any of that stuff. It's not the content lack right now. It's purely, for me, it's purely the AI just essentially getting hacked. And I'm going to give it. I just hate it. But this is also one of 
the I've never been as tense. I've never been as like as just on the edge of my seat playing a video game probably ever than this game. It it is probably number one, and I've played a whole lot of fucking games. And in that sense, this has got to be a 10. Like, this has the potential and even the a pretty good chance of being one of my favorite games of all time. But just currently, the one comes from, is it a recommendation? Uh, no. I, I mean, if you're somebody who really likes diving into alphas and, and doesn't mind that and you understand that concept, then totally pick it up now that it's not 150 bucks you know go ahead and pick it up because uh, because that type of person already knows what they're getting into but the average gamer or or even like a hardcore but a-list gamer you know somebody who plays counter-strike and overwatch and all these big a-listers and they're really into them but they don't really dive into these works in progress like don't buy this because you're gonna hate it you you will hate it and I feel like I would rather recommend that later when it's more polished, and then those people will actually, I mean. Yeah. Like, and I think why what you guys get you you think it's intense. I'm giving it a four because I think it's slow, and that's just my own personal opinion. Obviously, where you guys are like, man, it's so intense. I just feel like we're walking around through the forest. And then you eventually you find die. some. That's why you're always the first and one then to die. it's just like uh, I I don't I don't see the intensity in it. It just seems kind of it seems very static to me. That's because all your gear is shit that we gave you. Well, well, <laughs> yeah. even still, You've, have you ever have you ever played around with with a helmet, <laughs> heavy armor, and no. an auto, an no. automatic gun? Uh, have you ever played around not with a with naked with a pistol or naked with the shotgun. I had a shotgun. I had a shotgun one of the rounds. And let me tell you, it was something else. All right. Any final, no, no, no. Final, uh, final comments, concerns, short, short, anything about the game. I think you guys should mention your gaming experience. I mean, you guys have both played shooters competitively. You should at least mention that. I've played shooters competitively. Uh, yes, I have too, but I mean, I don't, this is just like a totally different game than any of the games I've played because you played, you played Day of Defeat, Thomas played Counter-Strike and you guys were, you guys weren't actually, what, what, at what level did you get? Did you guys get a thousand? Oh, uh, level 14, I think, uh, is the, what I remember. No, I, yeah, we, I, 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 we both played, we both played at a pretty high level. In, our, in those respective games back in the day. But this, like you guys have And I've played Overwatch about, pretty competitively. This is well, you guys night and day difference. Right? Yeah, we were, we, we played, we were, played Cal League. There you go. That's, that's what I wanted to hear. Yeah, way, Cal League. way back when. All right. Yes, yeah. That's uh, episode one, Escape from Tarkov. Uh, I think everybody has Fuck fun you. playing it. <laughs> Fuck Best, you! This is this is episode one. Whoever's listening, fuck you. We love you, and uh, fuck you. we'll be back soon. Peace. Go fuck yourself.